Hi guys, welcome back to Talk With Hass. If it's your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, thank you for still tuning in. This is my first vlog and it's gonna be at the SYDRC N1C Center. And it is a careers day for young people. So, let go. PhD student uh, within the field of epidemiology which is a subject within uh, public health so I look at research on a population level and my particular topic is looking at um, young people who grew up with HIV so they got HIV uh, acquired it from their mums they've aged uh, to adulthood now so they've transitioned from pediatric care to um, adult care um, I first started as your typical Somali student who was like I want to be a, med a doctor yeah that's yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> even I started off look at me now I think <laughs> So, so exactly. So I went into biomedical science, and then from there I thought I love biology, but I hate labs. Yeah. So then that's what led me onto uh, public health, and I thought, you know what, it has the biology aspect, it has the scientific yeah. type uh, aspect as well. But it, it's it's just that nice aspect where you can uh, make that population level um, impact. Yes, I I wanted to go to medicine because I just didn't know everything else that was out there. What I'm doing now, I didn't know it existed until yeah. I was like last year of undergrad, which I probably was like 21 yeah 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 so first thing is research what's out there and I think the best way to start is what subjects are you interested in mine was biology and a little bit of chemistry yeah but my point is let your actual interest guide you because there is that job out there you just maybe don't know and the best way you'll find out is by speaking to people older than you and people who are in the field they'll tell you about it by coming to places like me yeah, to networking events <laughs> a lot of people they're not active enough where they'll think okay I don't have the answers so I'll just not yeah. do anything but you can go up to there's so many people online let's say you're interested in public health but you don't really know exactly what it's about yeah contact a lecturer at a university and be like I would love career advice can I meet you yeah. can we talk about it a lot of them are so open to that That's they actually like that because they're thinking you sound self-motivated you sound aspirational yeah let me because you're young like they, they expect you not to know in one sentence what would you say to your younger self okay <laughs> and she's like this yes. is a deep one you are enough that's, you are enough. That's I'm literally what I would say. That's what I would say. You are enough. Everything, like anything you want to do, you can do it. Like you're yeah. capable. There's no such thing as you can't do it. I, I never had um, uh, like top A's. I had yeah. like C's and B's. Yeah. Mostly C's. Yeah. I always had pretty average grades, and yeah. they saw that and thought, you know, you can't be high achieving. But it doesn't require grades. It just requires hard work. You can do anything you put your mind to. Anything. So my name is Yusuf Dira. Uh, first and foremost, I'm a chairman of this organisation, the Somali Youth Development Resource Centre, uh, the N1C Centre. So um, and I've been doing this for the last 13 years. My day job, I'm a police officer, I'm a detective uh, with the City of London Police. Again, I've been doing that for about 12 years now. So it's specifically in terms of the police service, yes, it's a very challenging career. I can imagine, yeah. Um, but uh, equally very, very rewarding. Yeah. Uh, I can't emphasize enough. Uh, from a sort of a, a personal or a professional point of view, the development that you get mm. from being a police officer yeah. is uh, honestly it's something that the way I've, it's developed me yeah. as, a, as a human being professionally and, and sort of outside of work, inside of work, I, I can't emphasize it enough. So yeah. it's, um, yeah, it's, been, it's, been, it's been good. Looking back now, I would say just ignore all the negativity Forget around what society it. Exa exa exactly. Do and do want. and do what you want, what yeah. you enjoy, what you can excel at. Just stick to it and enjoy it. And excel at it. That's that's what I would say to my and, and don't worry about what other people think. Because at the end of the day, as long as you're doing something that's good, and that, that benefits love. society yeah, and yeah. that you enjoy. Yeah. I mean what what can go wrong? Exactly. My name is Mohammed Yusuf. I'm from Islamic yes. banking and background. Been in the industry for a couple of years. Um, I've came to the centre, I've been volunteering for them for the past like 10-15 years. 
So Alhamdulillah, I studied in Malaysia to do my master's in Islamic banking. What I would advise uh, the youngsters here, a lot of unis now are doing um, Islamic banking degrees, okay. as well as masters. In London? Yeah. The only issue is we only have one in Islamic bank here, yeah. but there's a lot of advisory firms. So once you finish your degree, you, you can do go into that. Uh, internship or do a graduate school. Yeah. And then from there, I mean, you can even travel. It doesn't yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of opportunities Options, out yeah, there. Yeah. Because the people me now, everyone's getting to know about yeah. banking. Customers feel that like, you know, they want to know about options. Yeah. So, there will be a lot of Islamic banks as well entering the market. Definitely. So, I just want to say, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves people who are patient, disciplined and brave. Yeah. So you have to install those qualities, whatever you do every day. So, we must support. And now, generally our people, Somalis are not patient. So we just need to, you know, get, you know, patient and, and you know, I'm What's your name? What do you do? My name is Mubarak. I'm, I'm a appliance engineer. Yeah. So I fix washing machines, dishwashers, cookers. So what would you say to young people who want to kind of go into business or I, your career path? I would say go into it because you have the freedom of actually working even though you work more and you earn less. So it's just about staying motivated. Staying so motivated, yes. You, you stay motivated, continue your grind, make sure you get your head down. What would you say to your younger self in like one second? If someone doubts you, don't, don't take that doubt as a... Uh, motivation to fail. Yeah. Just go for it. Go put your head down and go for what you believe in. Someone doubts me and says, oh, you can't do it, you can't make money from it. I'll go out my way just to prove it wrong and prove it to myself that I can do it. Uh, my name is Ben Abdul Karim. Um, I'm currently a community advisor for the Office for National Statistics, They're a government body that focuses on statistics. Yeah. So they do census every 10 years. Uh, my role at the moment now is to engage with the Somali community in Tower Hamas and Hackney. Yeah. I've uh, been doing that for six months. Um, so we encourage them to vote. Um, if they vote, the more numbers, the more the community will be recognised. And so my role is to engage and empower them really. So in this day now, the competition is really, really tough. So I would advise them is to get experience first. Mm -hmm. um, and also write to the field that they're interested in. Um, LinkedIn is a very good people. Most people are using LinkedIn to LinkedIn. create profiles. Yeah. That's very, very important. Definitely. And most importantly, you can through LinkedIn. You can find out the, uh, the you know the, the people that you want to get involved with. Mm -hmm. to go to the head of state, email them. Um, yeah, and also dedication. This is very important. Have you got a positive message or a positive saying that you live by? Yeah, I always say um, treat every day like it's your last day. Um, my name is Abdul Latif. Um, I'm a secondary school teacher and I teach maths. I would say um, teaching is a diverse career, mm -hmm. so it's not uh, one size fits all. Um, you can get into special education needs, you mm -hmm. can get into secondary schools, you can get into primary schools, mm -hmm. you can still choose the subject you like. Yeah. So if you've got a passion in a particular subject you like, you can choose that. So it's a very diversified kind of career. You can get into uh, the pastoral side, which is just looking after mentoring or education, yeah, you yeah. know, kind of just pushing the kids rather than teaching them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. So if, 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 um, well, what it is, is if you want a lot of family time or time to yourself, mm -hmm. um, if you want that good balance, mm -hmm. if you want um, the, uh, the reward aspect of, you know, uh, kids coming back to you after a few years and telling you, you know, you've done amazing and so on and so forth, then teaching is definitely for you. Yeah. And the easiest way to get into it is, I would say, um, get a feel for it. Mm -hmm. Start doing cover teaching. Mm, like yeah, that's the yeah. best way you can know. With you don't agencies. need to have any experience. Yeah. You don't need to have um, any qualifications. Mm -hmm. As long as you've got your basic GCSE, so on and okay, so forth. Yeah. You can go into an agency and they'll take you as a cover teacher uh, or a TA. Yeah. Right. TA, I think, would probably be the best to start yeah, with teaching yeah. assistant. You can really get a feel for how it is. You know, if you really want to get into it, if you can handle, it's a pressurized of environment. Course. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you're dealing with thirty kids. All of them have different needs. Um, so I would say do that first if you still want to do it get into uh, there's different routes of teaching so you can do a PGCE mm -hmm. um, you can do which is through unis mm -hmm. you can do something called initial teacher training mm -hmm. which is through the schools themselves there's a teach first program yeah. so there's about four or five different routes you can take and they all lead to being a qualified teacher I thought to myself when I left uni I was like oh well, I don't have a lot of time I need to get into a career right now Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you push yourself like that, you will not be able to see all the things that you, you can become and you're going you're gonna to put yourself in a tunnel and there's just one career path that you can take. You've boxed so yourself I, you, in. Exactly. Nice. I would say don't rush. Don't rush. Take yeah. your time with it. Take your time. Right there. I didn't rehearse this. So, I know you didn't. So, so yeah. just say it off the bat. What would you... Um, I would say I work longer hours now so I can work shorter hours later. 
podcast. What's up? <laughs> My name is Mohammed Arif. I'm a civil engineer. At the moment, I'm working as a project manager for a uh, subcontractor in construction. I wasn't interested in civil engineering, yeah, more yeah. architecture. Yeah. So uh, the things that put me off from architecture was that you don't bring the building to life. Okay. You, know, you don't yeah, actually yeah. do all You just the draw it. You just draw it yeah. and you just say, I want it to look like this, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. You, know? and the you guy, want it to be the guy behind. You're the one who actually yeah. does all the maths, all the physics, sees it happening, makes sure that the vision of the architect is actually Comes brought to life. To life. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so I went into university, obviously, doing civil engineering, and from there, um, I kind of got scared, I'm not yeah. going to lie. It yeah. just exposed me to so many different aspects of engineering. You know, you've got ge ge geotechnical engineering, you've got hydraulic engineering, you've got structural analysis. You've got so, it's so diverse, mm. it's unbelievable. And after the first year, I was like, do I really want to do this? Mm. It just seemed so difficult, yeah. like, you know? Um, but I pushed through, uh, I made it up. out. Um, and then when I graduated, one of the worst things that could ever happen to yeah. any graduate happened yeah. to, 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 to that whole class of, of, of graduates during that year. Yeah. yeah. The recession hit. And oh. we got told at our gra graduation ceremony, hang in there, guys, you'll get something. Oh and God. I couldn't find nothing. Oh. For a year and a half or so, something like that, I couldn't find nothing. Um, so eventually, I thought, you know what, I'm going to be a math teacher. Forget all this, I'm going to go into PGCE. I'm going to do my PGCE. I applied for my PGCE, and as I was about to start, I got a call from the agency and then I thought straight away it's a TA one mm -hmm. and they were like no we're not looking for any TA roles for you um, we're uh, engineering age we look for we have engineering jobs for you and um, do you want to take it and I was like of course I want to yeah. don't you want to know how much you pay this like, I don't care yeah and um, so I finally got into it and I was a chain boy mm. chain boy is basically an assistant engineer okay and they call you a chain boy because you're carrying around all the equipment oh. for an engineer now the funny thing is the guy that I was carrying all the equipment for, yeah. he wasn't an engineer. He's done this through experience. Okay. He's worked his way from 16 years old all the way up to whatever age he was wow. at that time. And that's who I was working for. And now I'm thinking, I've got to you. Well, I'm a graduate. What the hell is What's this that all about? about? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was hard. hard I was work. coming home shattered yeah. every day. Yeah. But I still went back every morning because I, I wanted to see that building finish, like, yeah. how it's going to look like and say, you know what, I did that building. Yeah. And then slowly, slowly, obviously moving from one company to another, different positions, and now became a project manager for a smaller subcontractor. Look but, at that. Exactly. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> you know? And what I would say to them is that before you get into anything, obviously just make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. Um, and. It's such a diverse industry. Make sure you choose the right path, mm. because sometimes you might end up in, you know, on a path in civil engineering that you don't want to go down. Yeah. Research as much as you can yeah. once you graduate and you get into a field. It's you know, it's not that easy to keep switching around. Yeah. What I would say is never give up, and always realize that you know, it's never too late to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, don't be disheartened as well. You know, just keep pushing. Uh, so my name's Sigil, uh, or Sigal Abdiwali, yeah. my professional work, I work for, I'm a local government officer um, and in my uh, personal, my volunteer, <laughs> I vol in, as a volunteer I, I do, um, I work for charities and I'm also um, involved with the local Labour Party. Oh, okay, that's amazing. So the local Labour Party? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I decided to get involved locally because I think it's the area that also impacts, like local politics impacts our lives more than everything. Definitely. Like, it's where it touches our lives the most. Um, and so I became active in that, and then the more I've sort of got involved, the more I've been inspired to do more. So. Mashallah, yeah. good for you. I'd say do it, absolutely. Don't, don't let anything hold you back. Obviously, I would encourage people to join the Labour Party, but whatever. <laughs> Labour, all right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Mohamed Ash, and I'm a chef, professional chef, and I work for Hayat Regions Hotels. <laughs> <laughs> He's a yes. chef, man like chef. Ash. That's it. Get to do it. <laughs> what do you say to your younger self? What <laughs> you Or wake up. You should have done this long time ago. Well, if I have a chance, I will go back. Play. It's never too late. Well, I follow your passion. What stopped you when you were younger? I don't know. Well, I just, you know, being lazy. I never have enough confidence. Yeah. And, you know, you, you always doubt like, yourself. You doubt myself. And for a very long time, a lot of my friends were saying, well, yeah, go do this, go do you that. You got and it, yeah. Go, go. Like, oh, 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 oh. Then finally, I went to college. And then after that, I went to a, an apprenticeship. Oh, year. mashallah. And then, alhamdulillah, I passed that. And now I'm a professional chef. 
There you go. You can do apprenticeship. Apprenticeship is really nice thing to do. You don't have to go to a college, which is three years long. Yeah. In, in apprenticeship, you know, you can do straight away. You work in all the department in the room service, banqueting. Yeah. Like that, for example, now I've done like a year and a half normal uh, yeah. chef. Yeah. And I'm now I'm doing it like another year for pastry. Mm -hmm. So I can have them both. And to be a chef, and you have them both pastry, you're on top of it, yeah, that's like, you see this, mashallah. Yeah, you've given yourself this option now. Yes. So you could do what you want. You can do what you want. Yeah, definitely. So after year, when you finish your training, your apprenticeship, you can go to the field that you want. Yeah. So actually, at the end of the day, it's like, if you like food, and go for it. And in, in, in our Somali community, for someone to be a Somali chef, mm -hmm. or to be a man cooking, it's like, mm, especially in the Europe, but back home, you know, I always man what yeah, in the kitchen. Yeah, 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 but in Europe. Lesson. In Europe, well, now a lot of chefs are changing, all the Somali chefs. Yes, <laughs> I think it's so important because um, you will see that representation in all those fields that you thought maybe you weren't capable of getting into or you didn't have what it takes. There's people out there who look like you, who come from the same place that you might have come from and what you'll get from it is a wealth of knowledge, wealth of experience, like all these people are here to signpost exactly how you can get to where you want to get to. So I would really encourage people, get out of your houses, come to places like this. I promise you, it's so inspirational. And I get that like the age you're at right now is probably a, a time of a lot of confusion and you don't know what you want to do in the world. So come out, ask questions, find out what it is you're interested in. You don't have to come to these kind of places knowing what it is you want to do. Come here and like ask questions, find out what might be for you. So that's what I'd recommend. It's, it, it's an opportunity for you to see that, you know, we can get into a lot of different kind of careers. Um, we're, not, we're not kind of, you know, uh, I would say restricted by, you know, our cultural background or our ethnicity and so on. Um, you can see in here, like here today, we, we had, you know, people from civil services all the way up to education. We had, you know, people in computing all the way up to engineering. So, so literally all it is is diversity. I mean, it shows that careers, you can get into any career you want and it has nothing to do with where you're from. That's, that's really the best place. I mean, that's the, one of the reasons why I want to come to an event like this, to see people that look like me uh, in different careers. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, as you just said, like, you know, it's important to see people that look like us that are in different careers. And, and also, I think it's extremely important for the young people to come to these events because in our time, university was always the answer and it was a key and it was cheap enough to actually go to university. Nowadays, it's really expensive and there's so many apprenticeship schemes out there in each different career path that you want to take. Yeah. And it's important to talk to someone that's within that career because that's what I would be telling any civil engineer, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, I'll be telling them, before you commit to university, have a look at all these apprenticeship schemes that apprentice. are out there yeah. because I've experienced coming out of university, going into my first one of my first jobs and being managed by someone that doesn't have a degree and he's got 10 years experience on me. So for me, that was like, well, how could that happen? I'm, I'm like 12 grand debt, like, you know, and this yeah. guy, this guy is like, you know, flush, he's got a yeah. house and everything. Yeah. So at the end of the day, there's so many different ways to get into the career that you wish to get into. And I think it's important that we give that information to the kids these days, you know? You get a rough idea and they will give you directions where to go. But also remember, as you time as time develops and the more older you get, your hopes and interests would might change and things like that. So it's good to look at it, create different angles, you know, and see what happens. And that way you can know what to go for. And that you can open your open you up so many different opportunities of things that you didn't realise that you could maybe go into and that you might really enjoy going into. So I think like here today there was what people who were working in the civil service and then there's like YouTube bloggers, there's people working in the medicine field. There's a, there was a pharmacist um, who's doing some really interesting work. So, yeah, I, th I think something like that just opening up your your um, thought, your thought process to to open up your mind to the possibility of the career path that you can have. You know, a lot of times young people are told you can't get into that career, you can't get into that industry. But, mm -hmm. um, seeing people from their background, but also a similar upbringing, similar you know environment can actually push them, but also inspire them to believe that they can get into industries like law, uh, teachers, um, doctors, business people, um, train drivers, all of these industries, um, young people should aspire, but also ha should have the confidence to want to wanna go into these industries. There's so many different professions that work in the community, 
and it's better for them to see people that are growing up in the area mm. that have become police officers, doctors, lawyers, yeah. you know, counsellors. It can be done. So we're just trying to basically open up their minds, you know. Listen to their journey and how they got there. It's always important to kind of reflect, but also listen, you know. Learn from any mishaps, any problems they had. So I you encounter surrender. That's why I have وأنا أو يجي نفط الكود يكلف في إذا يستي المية أو قاعدة إنه ليه يهين ضد بدن أو عاونان أنا جا إكسام بالوحن كان ويل كيجا يرترتين وعي وحور رب السبب شقت حتى وحوها كونفيوس لبقف أيوة لا كل مي لبدي قفنا أدب أو فرحين عم تلاذ أيسيان يسأل الله تلان يا مستقبل كوناكسن إني هذا سي مر كوبسان سينيت أهان بسان سي أي محالي راه ذا إنه عنو كانت وإنه قد موتي في تجار إن نعم وح أوبرنا يا حتى سبتكتير أوبرنا يا وحيابها أكو سمين كرو وأسرق أسر إسوه هاي سنين مركي ورا إنه سمين كرو مرك أد يأد يأد اللوج بهاي هاي وحنا جعلان لها every year or every six months إنسان وكل اللي سووا إمارو وح أوبرنا يا ده اللي يرد يعني بروفيشنال كهاي ولكنها <تصفيق> lot of options whatever they wanted there's so many issues there's so many things to tackle one of the biggest issues is uh, that um, our youngsters is suffering from is uh, identity crisis so today alhamdulillah was a good event where a lot of somali professionals they took their time off and they contributed to their community to be a role model to support all the youngsters in, in inspiring them uh, i think career events is very important and uh, because the youngsters will have someone to relate to someone from their background from all the things that they will understand better the issues their goals and they will give them a good a sincere kind of you know and uh, advices about and uh, how to inshallah to raise their aspirations and how to have a longer term goals in their life mm. <laughs> وأمهات علينا يا إسواي دي آر سي سيدة إسكاح السارة مرة ربا بإنا يوتكو حقبتا وحي هاي ستار هول موضلس ميلل كالتا لنا يوحا بناك كالتا عايا مركا عونو كي هل كان قحرا وحواي وحو كبد بادا يا إن إلهي نها نوذ بدبادا يا عرورتا إنو إنفولف كوياشو ولبو حدودك كالتا لنا لها يامك إيج إنه كوب اللعبان إلما إنت يريري نهيل إن إنت لغو صوحرو سي أي إلميه وأقادان إنا يجران داد إياقا لمد أه أو أن بنانك آدين أو أن وحبا سمينين أو لطالية أو لسا أو منترين أو أه سو ما ردان وحا نقا مقان موستر وحوا منترين إنا هاي الرول موديلس إن تبا لكن آد وحا وفرح سنة إنا هاي سنة رول موديلس إنا هاي سنة منترس إنا هاي سنة داد إلميهن أو الكوتو إذا مركا آد إيا آد إيا آد مر لبات مر ستحات وأو أحد إلينا يا 
SYDRC. Guys, mashallah, I just got back from the SYDRC N1 Center. Wow. It was just so amazing to see so many different people with different professions, different passions, talking to young people. But we need more young people to go to events like this. I knew it would be really important to do a vlog at a careers event just so that young people know how important it is to go to these type of events because you have no idea there is people from all different walks of life engineering medicine chef doctors teachers amazing like we are out here we're doing this for real mashallah but i hope if you are unable to come to today's event that you were uplifted by this video that you were motivated and it helped you in some way i hope so so inshallah khair guys i will see you really really soon i hope you enjoy this video make sure to like comment and subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend sydrc well done Allahumma barik, it was so amazing. I'm so proud of you all. It was so lovely that you guys are doing this type of event, especially in Black History Month. Representation is so important and it's just so amazing to see Black Muslim people all coming together, trying to show our young people there's actually role models out here and you know what we don't always have to focus on the negative as a community there is so much positive out there mashallah keep doing what you're doing guys it is sydrc n1 center that's where the event was held today mashallah they, they do some amazing amazing work if you want to find them i'll put their link in the bio i'll put their apps here and the people that you can contact to get involved but yeah guys i hope you enjoyed this video until next time we out